What's up everybody, Do right back at it again with another video on Dead Matter. Today we are going to be talking about an update that just came out not too long ago. I'm a little late on it, but I thought I'd cover it anyway, because you know, content, right? So let's go ahead and get started here. Now, fortunately, this update does not contain a date as to when the closed alpha is going to be, but so long as they keep giving me updates about new things that are coming to the game, eh, not a big deal. For development, it says here, Kyle has been working on a code pass for the ATV and player-made containers, such as buildable crates that players will be able to attach locks to. He has also been working on triggers that will snuff out campfires. If there is a lack of oxygen, such as rain or heavy snow, and switching seats while still in a vehicle, note here, passengers will be able to interact with empty seats to move with them. He has also gotten a key distribution set up on our website, so backers will be able to access their closed alpha and gain keys when they are available. More details to come with that soon, okay. Disclaimer, the following clips are recorded in a development environment with many gameplay features turned off, such such as hand animations, full player models, etc, 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 while features are being developed. So yeah, here is just showing off the ATV, and to be honest, it reminds me a lot of um, the mongoose from Halo. You'll see why in just a second here, but scrubbing through this GIF, it starts off with us in a third person perspective looking at the side of the ATV. The guy that's on it looks straight like a dummy with no arms, and he really doesn't move throughout this GIF, basically a statue. The whole point of this GIF is essentially to show off the ATV and how off-road it can actually be, because they take it over hills, and and when it turns off to the side, you can actually see the all-terrain part of the vehicle. It's actually cool watching the tires go up and down in the right areas. For like a split second, you actually get to see what it looks like in first person. And it actually looks kind of cool. Though we didn't see actual arms in the third person, when they switch it over to first person, you can actually see the guy holding onto the handles. And it actually looks pretty slick, I gotta say. And this next part is basically where it really reminds me of Halo because he like flips it over and the thing bounces like a freaking mongoose from Halo. And you get off of it just like it too which is kind of funny but yeah definitely looks really fun to actually drive so i uh, can't wait to try that out let's move on to the next thing here so this next gif is basically showing off the campfire what he's doing here is basically switching the time of days but only certain parts of the day when it's raining so there's like a light drizzle and then there's a little more of a downpour and then there's heavy rain and it basically affects the way that the fire is going to be so this gif is basically showing how fire is affected during certain rain it's just another cool way to immerse you in the world but uh yeah i just want to take a little closer look at some of the stuff that's in here so we got a lock box right here or an electric box however you call it and one of those gas station things attached to this building one of these are just like randomly placed assets can't really say for sure but let's move on before he gets to the fire thing it actually shows quite a bit of the uh radio menu i think that's what you call it you got building container survival campfire they even use one the lighter so does that mean we have to pick up lighters and fuel to actually set this stuff on fire i mean i would imagine right you have to gather a lot of stuff as seen in the previous video which if you don't have that i have a link at the eye icon but uh yeah it's cool seeing this here one last thing that i think i want to really talk about is that little lock box that's off to the side there that looks like a gun case right or is it just a like a little chest that you could make and place in the world maybe you can make or find this type of chest put it on the back of your bike and have it strapped to the bike wouldn't that be cool to like upgrade your inventory i mean you could already like place stuff on the vehicle right so that would definitely be interesting but uh yeah let's move on here so this guy named Gunschlinger, a guy that I did an interview with, I have those videos up at the top right. They say that he has been working on polish passes for the campfire and bird AI. I wonder what the significance of bird AI is. Is it just a thing that's there or can you shoot one down and eat it or something? The level designer has been working on polishing and detailing the world overall. Metamoth has been working on detailing the caves, wilderness areas, many of the houses, and utilizing some new furniture setups throughout the map. Neat. Dogtooth. These are some very interesting uh, names they got here. Has been continuing his work on the player and NPC models and has started work on jerseys and other clothes for players. Jerseys? Are they talking like sports jerseys or something? What do Canadians like? Hockey? I don't know. But anyways, Yitz, or Marcus, has been working on some of the more safe areas that players can interact with NPCs as well, as well as more rural areas of the alpha map. The NPCs that survive in Dead Matter have managed to secure a foothold in many much-needed facilities 
facilities on the map so they can continue to survive the outbreak. Players will find plenty of people to talk to, learn about, and gain the trust in order to potentially gain some access to what they have. And then they show a bunch of like safe areas. The first picture here is basically like a garage where it looks like they're actually fixing up a whole lot of cars, which makes me wonder, is this like a place where you can buy cars or trade for cars or maybe store your cars? Like if you need a part for like a car or you're out of gas or something, you come here and uh, you know, offer up or something. That'd be kind of neat. The next picture here is a, it looks like a tiny refugee sort of place, but it seems interesting nonetheless. I can't think of anything that they would actually have here. I mean, they have like a lot of like trucks here. So maybe this is like a moving company sort of thing. Like if you want a whole lot of stuff moved from one side of the map to the other, these are the guys who you call maybe. Those are some pretty big looking trucks. I wonder if they're functional. But anyways, let's move on to the next thing here. The next picture here is of a warehouse that looks like the inside interior of what we just looked at. At least that's what it seems like. Yeah, there's like a ramp right here. So maybe that leads into the truck from the previous picture. So I'm curious to know what these guys actually export here. Like, why is it important for me to, you know, gain the trust of these guys? Am I right? Like, what can I get access to? And then we scroll down to the next picture here. And it's obvious right here that these guys are power. I'm assuming like this is like a way to get power in like a house that you're at or something. So yeah, giving some variety here. So yeah, I mean, I'm assuming that these guys are going to have some sort of, you know, special things to them as to why you would want to be friends with them and you know share their emblem and whatnot so that's pretty interesting up next it says here are some not so safe areas so these are probably the ones that are like really overrun by zombies the first one it looks like we got like some sort of in here with a car wash i really have to wonder if there's like a significance to these places like why would i need to go and you know get into a car wash like is there something there that people need i mean i'd imagine there'd be like some sort of mission like oh snap we left uh we left the teddy bear there can you go get it like Okay, um, money better be good. The next one we have an interior with an interesting vending machine right there that says teeth poison and it's all soda, which is very, very fucking true. So that's, that's creative right there. The next picture we have here is uh, a go-kart track, which we saw a lot of go-kart stuff in the previous video. If you want to go check that out, we actually saw the size of the big track. But again, and I'm not really sure why we would need to go here. I mean, there'd have to be something significant, right? Or maybe you're just going there to explore. I mean, I guess it would be kind of cool to screw around at a race car track but is that just the significance of it just to screw around i mean i guess not everything needs to have an importance so it's whatever i guess but anyways and then we have some sort of medical center that looks more like a diner but it was like converted to it it seems or like some sort of checkpoint i could definitely see something like significant in here like food and medical supplies i could definitely see something there but anywho let's push on here it says here hacks has been working on gunshot tails sound effect implemented for many environments and then it shows off the gun trailing So the beginning of the video, you could definitely see her and hear the gun trailing. It goes a whoosh. And then he walks inside of like a crate and you could hear the, the audio bouncing around inside of that crate. I was actually looking at that big red thing right there when he shot it. And I was like, oh, is that going to explode? Because in previous games, I see a lot of those and I don't ever see the explosion. And then it freaking explodes. Yeah. And then it pulls out the sniper rifle and then you can hear that. Yeah, so you could definitely hear like the audio bouncing around. Pulls out the lever action. So yeah. They were just basically showing off here how when you shoot, you can hear the bullet trailing. And when you go inside, you can hear the echoes. Definitely a pretty cool feature, and I'm glad to see it. And that's pretty much that for the update. I've heard a lot of people say that the alpha is going to be coming pretty soon here. I'm not sure if there's actually been anything announced that proves that, but I don't imagine it's going to be too long because the developers have been talking about it quite a lot lately and showing a bunch of updates over the past month or so. So it can't be long now, but uh, yeah. So what are your thoughts on this? This was a relatively small update. 
with a lot of cool little details here. And yeah, with the closed alpha coming around the corner, I really can't wait to try it. So I'm gonna end it here. If you're someone that enjoys the fact that I cover games like Dead Matter, why don't you go ahead and like the video, comment, and share it. If you're someone that's new, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and ding the bell. Stick around a little, you never know, you might find something that you like. If you would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon, just send two bucks a month. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.